morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and welcome to Global Atheist News Roundup, dateline 6th of January 2024. Happy New Year! We are back to normal. This week's headlines. Iran leader vows harsh responses to deadly bombings that killed 84. Muslims massacred 223 Christians and injured more than 500 people in and around Catholic churches in Nigeria on Christmas Day. Denmark introduces laws that question its attitude towards Islamism and blasphemy. Thousands of people came to Oldham for Dumb and Dewar. Mormons are no longer a majority in Utah. And a US presidential candidate is speaking the truth. And Pentecostals keep on breaking into a praise break throughout a church service. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei has vowed a harsh response to a bomb attack on crowds marking the anniversary of spymaster Qasem Soleimani's assassination by the US. A two-bomb attack in Kerman in southern Iran killed 84 people and wounded many more. The Islamic State Group IS said it carried out the attack. IS has attacked civilians and security forces in Iran on a number of occasions in recent years. It welcomed the 2020 death of General Soleimani, whose militias fought against the group in Iraq for years. Iranian officials said at least one blast was caused by a suicide bomber. Muslims massacred about 223 Christians and injured more than 500 people in and around Catholic churches on Christmas Day while chanting Allahu Akbar. See this video. <laughs> Hello, hello, Sinusi. Yalla, ena sang kanaji. Kabio ba ching hanya. The Danish Parliament bans Quran burnings. See this video. Denmark's recent legislative move to ban Quran burnings has garnered attention in the wake of widespread protests. The bill, passed on December 7th, prohibits the public mistreatment of holy texts with penalties ranging from fines to a maximum of two years in prison. The Danish Ministry of Justice stated that the aim is to counter the perceived systematic mockery contributing to escalating terrorism threats. Inger Stolberg, leader of the Denmark Democrats Party, said, quote, history will judge us harshly for this and for good reason. What it all comes down to is whether a restriction on freedom of speech is determined by us or whether it is dictated from the outside. It took Denmark 600 years to repeal blasphemy laws and six years of bullying to put them back on the books. It's deplorable, shameful, and embarrassing. And Denmark will be judged harshly for this. Dumb and doer. Yes, I don't know what it means either. In Oldham. See this video. Thank you. 
Eight in the nation. But by 2022, the people with no religion were 25% of Utah's population, near the national mean of 27%. This is a rapid, substantial change in Utah's religious demography and is fueled primarily by Mormon defectors. The church is losing its ability to influence behavior in neighborhoods, workplaces, and civic organizations. This, in turn, makes it easier for Mormons who are questioning their faith to leave it behind without social penalties. Based on a survey of Utahans that uses self-reported church membership, Mormons are no longer a majority in Utah. This assertion conflicts with Mormons the LDS are no longer church a majority rules, in Utah, which, according to the Journal of Religion and Demography state. edition, tell. however, the church uses the dwindling criteria Mormon population that are not useful itself, for social and outcome of secularization. And Mormon leaders accelerate the continued secularization process for public in a positive feedback agenda. In 2004, an avowed atheist the highest in church Iowa membership rate in the nation. The presidential candidate, but by 2022, why he should people vote with no religion him. were 25% of Seattle's population, near is the national real. mean of 27%. See this video. This is a rapid, substantial change in Utah's religious Pentecostals kept breaking and is fueled primarily by Mormon defectors throughout their church service. Here's another The church video. is losing its Just ability what? to influence behavior in neighborhoods. Shortly on this channel, you can watch Tosia and I chat guest Ken Daniels. This, in turn, who began makes it in easier Africa for where Mormons he was born to evangelical missionaries to leave it behind. He's now an penalty. atheist software engineer. Based on a survey of users, come and find out and join the news is self-reported church and don't forget to watch views Mormons on the news. Are no longer the show a where our in opinionated pal. Give their this views on the items I just with the LDS on. church roles. This has been which show a global atheist majority persists in the state. Like, subscribe However, the and church share. uses membership Thank criteria you for watching. that are not useful for social scientists, and Mormon leaders have used these dubious numbers for public relations and propaganda. An avowed atheist in Iowa challenged a presidential candidate on why he should vote for him if he says that God is real. See this video. Popular, a satanic vote yep. that would appeal to them that's not a kitschy conservative catchphrase. Okay, I'll tell you this. The wokeism and all that. No, what we see is a government that is propping up Christianity, that is excusing Christianity's bad actors, that isn't doing anything to fight Christian yeah. nationalism. So here's what I here's what I believe. There may be points in our history where that would be applicable. Respectfully, I don't think that's actually a major threat in this country compared to the threats that I named. But you have Christian nationalism. But you don't feel like I don't feel like that's a major threat right January now. January 6th. I feel like wokeism is, is, and, and, and transgenderism is. But you asked me to say something that will allow to speak to people who are atheists. Because there's an atheist people. watching this right yeah, now. Yeah, let me, let me actually just address your question. You are free to live your life and practice your faith or absence thereof freely without anybody standing in your way. Because that's what the First Amendment of the Constitution ensures. And if I have one job as your next president, it is to swear an oath to that constitution and to keep it. Here's how 
you'll know that I know what I'm talking about. This was modeled on Thomas Paine's work, Common Sense. People are familiar with that. That was actually the leaflets they handed out to start the American Revolution. I'll tell you about one thing about Thomas Paine. He was an atheist, actually. So one of the men who started the American Revolution, most of our founding fathers were Christian. Thomas Jefferson was a theist. He's my favorite founding father, probably my favorite president. I looked up and find the most common cause of him. Less so with Tom and pa Thomas Paine, but I respect the hell out of him. Because he too, without him, the American Revolution wouldn't have happened. So I recognize that about our history. And I recognize that about our Constitution. And I recognize that even people of diverse faiths in this country were bound together by the ideals enshrined in that Constitution. And I will fight to the death for actually reviving those constitutional ideals in this country. And what's in that First Amendment is you may not agree with what I have to say, but I will defend to the very end your right to say it. That's America. That is what makes America great. That is what makes America excel. So yes, can we disagree on some questions and still have you support me as your U.S. president? Not as your pastor, but as your president? I think Don Wright can take this mic. This might help. Yes or no, just to finish. Okay. Right. Do you believe our rights come from God or from you? I believe that... Our natural, rights, democracy. our natural rights outside of a government come from God. Our natural rights. In the context of a constitutional republic, the rights that we enjoy are the ones enshrined and codified in our constitution. And I recognize the difference between being a president and a minister. And finally, Pentecostals kept breaking into a praise break throughout their church service. Here's another video. Just watch. Shortly on this channel, you can watch Tersia and I chat with guest Ken Daniels, who began life in Africa where he was born to evangelical missionaries. He's now an atheist software engineer. That's an interesting story. Come and find out and join in by text. And don't forget to watch Views on the News, the show where our opinionated panel give their views on the items I've just reported on. This has been... Global Atheist News. Please like, subscribe and share. Thank you for watching.